Hello, everyone. My name is Eva, and I'm the curatorial resident at Stride Gallery. Um, I would like to welcome you all to Farzani Aziz Poor's uh, artist talk, which is in conjunction with our current group exhibition, Shroud, Crown, Gray Area Generations. I will start off with a land acknowledgement, go over some Zoom etiquette, and then I'll pass it off to Ariam to speak about the collaboration between Stride and Immigrant Council for Arts Innovation. I want to acknowledge that this conversation and exhibition is taking place on Treaty 7 territory, and I want to pay my respects to the original people of this land where the Elbow River and the Bow River meet. Stride Gallery is located in Mokinstis, the traditional territory of the Treaty 7 people. This includes the Blackfoot Confederacy composed of the Siksika, Sikani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Tutsina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. This is also home to the Métis Nation Region 3. As a first generation Canadian, I am eternally grateful to the original people who have been here and cared for this land for thousands of years. Um, and submit any questions that you have into the chat and we will go over these questions at the end of the talk. So I'll just pass off to Ariam now. Thanks, Eva. Hi everyone, my name is Ariam Kim. I'm the director at Stride Gallery. Um, it's my pleasure to um, host this artist talk today uh, in partnership with uh, ICAI. So Shroud, Crown, gray, gray Area Generation is an exhibition that features works by Farzani Azizpour, Twinkle Banerjee, Claudia Shagoya, Sabrina Naz Komanescu, um, whose uh, collaborator includes Kim Stanley, Ayubami Balogan, Misha, Misha Maseka, and Anthony De Niro. Um, so this exhibition came together in a spirit of collaboration with the Immigrant Council for the Arts Innovation. Uh, ICI works to connect immigrant and newcomer artists to resources, opportunities, people, and spaces in Calgary, as the art world has so many invisible barriers and walls of relations that seem impenetrable. So we are very honored to share space with ICAI and the artists who came to this space through the wonderful work uh, that Toyin Olebel um, spearheads at ICAI. So we have with us Toyin, who is the founder and executive director of uh, the ICAI, who will be part of the discussions today. And in the individual artist talks are an opportunity to highlight each artist's practice. And I'm very pleased to introduce all of you to Farzane. So Farzane is an artist who specializes in figurative expressive oil painting. Uh, born in Iran, she has a passion and talent in painting. In 2020, she moved to Canada to pursue her artistic activities, activities in an international environment. Although she had a bachelor's degree in medical radiology, she did her postgraduate studies in painting at the Tehran University of Art, instructed by renowned Iranian painters. She has participated in several exhibitions in North America and Europe, also being awarded the 10 best among competitors in France. Her inspiration stems from people close to her, especially her children. Intrigued by her, their faces, looks, and gestures, she then brings her, her own perspectives to the canvas. Azizpur believes that art could be a common language among multicultural people to better understand each other, regardless of beliefs, religion, gender, and differences. Um, so we are really excited to have Farzane's body of work um, called The Generation Gap. It's part of this exhibition. Uh, and Farzane, take it away, please. Hi, I am Farzane Azizpur. I was born in Iran. And um, I, I would like to explain about my country as part of my background that this is really important, I think, as my background. Um, Iran uh, is located in Middle East, and uh, if you don't uh, don't have more information about Iran, I have to say uh, that Middle East is actually is like a pregnant woman that uh, always have a lot of incidents, unpleasant incidents, and uh, happening in there. That uh, as a positive point for an artist. 
is the best place for finding a concept every day that a, an artist wakes up, have a lot of, uh, find a lot of concepts for the arts. But uh, for the same reason that uh, my per I personality look for some places that uh, escape from war, assassination, or misguiding in religion, discrimination, or uh, something uh, like, like as, uh, uh, for example, force, hijab force, uh, to, or coverage, uh, I uh, decided to move uh, to Canada, to immigrate to Canada. I choose the place uh, that uh, now is optional for me and I can choose my place because the date of birth is not, the place of birth is not a place that you can choose. Uh, this is a kind of forceful things, but uh, now I can and I did it. I uh, immigrated to Canada uh, from July uh, 2020 and I am really optimist, optimistic, hopeful that uh, in my new life uh, is uh, here, uh, full of would be full of new happening, new pleasant pleasant happening and uh, accomplishment. I hope, of course. And um, I um, I want about my uh, talk about my background a little about the uh, how I. Uh, uh, I found my artistic feeling uh, when I flash back. I uh, found that when I was a child, uh, I think between 10 or 12 years old, I remember I made some handcrafts uh, by knitting so, um, and some uh, patterns, some motifs, and binded them to each other. And uh, such a, I made some shirts for my dolls and for myself. And uh, I made some uh, colorful patterns and um, it was really difficult for me, but I enjoyed and my mother always encouraged me that you are doing a great job because <clears throat> you are using your imagination and you don't have any pattern to do them. And uh, I never thought that it could be my, uh, it could be my uh, background in uh, the few for the future about textures or fashion designing or uh, colors or something like that. And but my turning point, I think, it's uh, once that uh, I was uh, in my twenties. Uh, at that time, I was studying uh, in university as a uh, medic in medical radiology, of course, I was in the library and I saw a magazine. It was, uh, the magazine was, um, it was a picture in it. Uh, it was a, a work of Claude Monet. Uh, it's called Water Lilies. Uh, it was really uh, effective for me. And after that point, I uh, could never forget painting. And I think uh, something uh, such as a sparkle happened in my life. Uh, I, feel, I felt something uh, in my heart that I cannot uh, uh, forget it. And uh, after that, I tried to find a, um, some of uh, instructors to uh, help me to find my path because uh, uh, because um, I, I did like to uh, I did like to be an independent painter because some instructors uh, they didn't let uh, the, um, uh, the students to be independent. Uh, and fortunately I uh, finally find this person that really helped me and it was another uh, turning point in my life. Uh, my technique, as you know, is uh, oil and color and canvas and uh, sometimes acrylic or uh, other materials. Uh, and my style is figurative expressive uh, because um, really I um, 
um, because of my interest in psychologic uh, issues. And I always studied psychologic books. Uh, people are really different and different and important for me. And I, I have always concerned about them. I consider them their gestures, their uh, mimics, uh, their, uh, of course, undeliberately. I don't like to focus them or bother someone in front of me, but it is a kind of that uh, happened in my mind. And uh, some, for example, a sitting a style, uh, a standing slide, their foot, their hand, how to uh, put them together. They are always uh, attractive. And um, I would like to, uh, just as a inspiration source, I would like to use them. Uh, but, and I have some, inter as you uh, explained, I have some international showcase, showcasing in, in international and internal exhibition in my country. And, um, but uh, about my dream and about my resolution that I want to talk about that is uh, being a fashion designer uh, for the future. Uh, improve in painting is one part of my life, but the main dream and the main uh, resolution that I am uh, looking for is uh, being a fashion design designer for my brand or a famous company. I hope, of course. And uh, in during my pandemic, during the pandemic, I uh, tried to make a collection. I've worked on a project uh, about fashion design and um, the relationship between uh, feminine and uh, historical monument in Iran. And um, uh, but unfortunately, after my uh, immigration, uh, I couldn't touch even my brushes up to now. <laughs> yeah. This is, that's it. <laughs> and uh, upset because, uh, you know, every, each parents wants to do the best for the kids. And, uh, you know, sometimes a lack of experiences and um, doesn't have any uh, perspective about having kids, uh, maybe make some difficulties for, the, for their future. And uh, because of this concept, I was, um, I was thinking of that and I was uh, trying to find a solution for this challenging. Uh, this concept came in my mind, emerged in my mind, and I thought that it could be a, um, it could it could be a, a proper concept. I uh, used it as a uh, for my project, and uh, I started with uh, with this because uh, at that time I thought that they are really strange for me, and I cannot recognize them as as if they are. Uh, wearing masks, but they are in one row. They are side by side in each other because they have the uh, one problem. They they are uh, a common. They have a common problem in front of the, for example, the parents. Uh, but they are different. They are uh, one of them is black. One of them is uh, white. Yeah, I mean that. Um, they don't have uh, enough commonality with each other, uh, but uh, in, in, uh, they are in, um, in one place in front of their, uh, their parents. Um, and uh, using uh, some logos such as Batman or Superman for the uh, kids, just I want to say that uh, I want to point out their generation uh, being you young and um, uh, just that. Um, um, at that, uh, at that picture, uh, it was my perspective about the kids. But uh, in this one, it is uh, my son perspective. I, of course, I have to say, uh, um, choosing the family member as a 
concept is not, uh, of course, this dynamic is uh, there is in my family, but uh, I don't want to say this is my son or this is me. Uh, it is not my main purpose. Uh, I just use them as a inspiration source, just that. And uh, when somebody says to me, oh, you, uh, you didn't paint the sun such as your sun exactly, it, may, it, made me, it makes me, uh, but it, it bothers me because my, I don't want to uh, have a realistic uh, style in my painting. I create something and I finished at that uh, moment that I like uh, the, my creature. Just that, I don't want to be some, I paint someone exactly such as the person. Uh, in this frame, uh, I want to say that uh, he's uh, weird. He's, uh, he cannot make a connection with me uh, as a mother. And um, he uh, thinks that I'm not her, his mom. I am uh, such as a colorful, colorful palette with this uh, dress and uh, using the masks because the uh, uh, Frida Max masks because uh, I use these masks because it is more popular and everybody knows her and for uh, an audience that uh, sees my works it is uh, it was important for me that uh, don't make any uh, other questions from um, the main subject. I want to be concentrate uh, on the main subject as uh, in fact. He cannot, uh, um, he cannot understand me he, um, and uh, because the mask in, in the nature is mysterious, I used masks in my works uh, because uh, I want to say how far uh, we could be, uh, we are near to close to each other, but how far we, uh, we could be unrecognizable in front of each other and how far we could be mysterious with each other, for each other. Yeah, the same happened here. Uh, I use a Trump because uh, as a mask, because everybody knows Trump. And um, um, I didn't want to mention about politics or something like that. I was just to say that um, uh, how far they are far from each other. For example, people like always discuss about politics, about worldwide happening or something that the girl is bored. The girl doesn't like to listen to this. Uh, these memories or this news. And uh, father is uh, self-confident in front of the picture and it's far from the, really far from the daughter. And um, mm -hmm. um, again is the uh, perspective of their kids, I think. Uh, they see us as a parent. We are in front of them. We, we are facing, uh, uh, sitting, facing each other. And um, we are um, strict and uh, we are traditional. I use this te texture as a traditional one. Uh, because some monuments in Iran uh, have the, the same patterns. And I used it as uh, say that um, different uh, taste that we have and uh, our gestures and our uh, hands with each other is a kind of um, shows that we are, um, we are under question and we don't know how we have to do for them, the uh, daughter is offensive, and uh, he she has questioned. I think she is rebel, and she doesn't like to accept the situation. And the son is relaxed, 
and doesn't care about everything. It is not important that uh, they have to respect to their parents or something like that. And of course, it is their perspective, not mine. In this one, I, um, I want to show that, again, their perspective that we are supporting each other as a parents, but they are far from each us. Uh, they are not any, uh, any uh, common point with us, and um, they don't like to be with us in one role. You know, uh, their position shows that uh, they are bored, they, are don't, they don't like to be with us. And uh, we are in gray scale as a parents. It seems that um, they think that we are old fashioned, we are STD, and, uh, but colors in the kids shows that they are powerful, they are uh, active, they are fresh, and um, they, they belong to uh, the, the uh, new, the, uh, for example, I don't know how to say, uh, they are old and they are new, you know, uh, such as the uh, old uh, photographies that they were black and white. That's the point, yeah. Uh, in this uh, frame, I want to explain about some uh, sexual orientation that uh, nowadays uh, there is in a new generation. You know, um, I think um, I don't want to judge and or uh, ignore something. I believe that uh, this orient orientation, there is this orientations in the society and I'm really happy because of the acceptance of the society. And, um, uh, but in my generation, um, it may, might be a kind of a stigma that uh, when somebody wants to uh, show the, their tendency or uh, their orientation, and uh, for example, uh, the person should hide because of uh, his feeling or her uh, emotions because of uh, the society. And, um, but uh, nowadays, because of some movies, I think, because of some uh, advertising in social medias, some people, some young, uh, they are showing off this orientation. Uh, it's the point that I want to mention in uh, this uh, picture and the dress black uh, and red that uh, the, uh, this person uh, in front of the frame uh, wore is uh, a kind of, um, for, uh, this is, uh, this is this designated by Alexander McQueen uh, I don't know you know him or not. He's a, a famous, he was a famous uh, fashion designer and uh, he was a homosexual. And uh, this uh, clothes was um, showed in, in a runway uh, in 2009. And if you look at the uh, bottom of the uh, painting, you see that the patterns from uh, above the clothes to the bottom, uh, it changes to the birds. And the birds is a symbol of freedom. And it's a, it's a kind of uh, freedom for the person who have uh, uh, sexual orientation, different sexual orientation, or that sentence that everybody deserves love. Uh, I want to uh, show that, that uh, we cannot make any limitation for the persons that uh, it should be this or should be, it should be that because the creation is so. And we cannot decide for the person that uh, they change their uh, orient their tendencies, you know. 
and um, I believe that, uh, but I want just uh, mention that how far uh, this gap generation is because in my uh, time, uh, if for example, I had a friend that she never, uh, never could talk about this orientation. She, she had to hide this, uh, this uh, tendencies. And uh, I am happy because of this happening in the society. Of course, it is a gap, but I believe that it's very important. I we believe this kind of orientation. And uh, it is the result uh, of my project that uh, there are a lot of challenges. There are a, a lot of struggling with kids. You do your best for the kids, but at the end, you find them that they are, and they are belonging to, it seems as if they are belonging to other planet, to another planet. And uh, they are, uh, actually in general, they are kids. They are playing with the uh, toys and uh, he's uh, fitting the puzzles and the wooden horse, uh, everything in memory of uh, the childhood. Uh, but for example, uh, the girl used piercing uh, or the son is, uh, is, uh, has tattoo on uh, his fingers. He wants to show themselves that they are growing up. They are um, young and they don't need to, or the girl is staring at the person in front of her that he, she wants to say, yes, I am a rebel person and nobody can uh, limit me and I do whatever I want. But uh, if you uh, pay attention the uh, pattern of the puzzle, you see the uh, Pinocchio as a famous character in cartoon. Uh, I want to say that, um, you know, he, Pinocchio is famous uh, because of always he deceived uh, by, uh, he was deceived by uh, the friends, you know, and he never uh, listened to the, uh, to his grandpa, his guardian. And, um, you know, I want to say that of course, I know that they are, uh, I have a lot of challenging or every parent had, uh, has challenging with the uh, kids, but we have to accept that they have to uh, be in this, this manner because they want to prove themselves. They want to uh, gather uh, experiences, to make experiences. And because of that, they are so. Uh, this gap is a kind of, uh, it is a kind of real things that uh, happened and it is not for just for uh, in uh, for my experience I know that each country in each uh, culture uh, parents have the same problems and it is uh, important for me that uh, I can find uh, my mm, audiences uh, because uh, this commonality is there is we have the same problem and uh, yeah but uh, I want uh, just I like to uh, mention just as a result of that indeed, uh, this uh, project I would like to suggest to some organization, some related organization, such as, I don't know, educational system, or the, I don't know that it, uh, it would be uh, a good situation if somebody who wants to have a baby, to have kids, to pass some courses and have some certificates and to know some, uh, to have some knowledge about bringing up the kids because uh, we do some mistakes in bringing up the children. Uh, and we know that childhood is really the most important part of life, our life that uh, we can, if something, uh, some mistake happened in that time, uh, the person 
have carried this uh, problem as a burden in, on uh, the shoulder for all the life. And um, I think it could be uh, better if uh, um, some organization uh, accept to uh, give uh, some opportunity to uh, people who want to have baby. So much for Zaddy for your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful presentation. You always mm -hmm. have so many incredible things to say and I loved hearing, and I'm sure everybody else, uh, very specific details about each painting. Um, I know Eva and I have stood in front of those paintings whenever we're in the gallery just talking about the different dynamics. It's really fun. It's been yeah. such a joy to see them. Mm -hmm. um, so Thank I think you. for this next part, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a conversation between you and Toyin. Um, so Toyin, please take it away and talk about ICAI and uh, and yeah, ask your questions for, for Zanny. And yeah, then I'll jump in with questions that the Stripe team has put together uh, for you for Zanny. And then we'll open it up for questions for everybody. So if anybody has any questions, we can ask them. You can put them in the chats and we'll get, the, get to them a little bit later. So yeah, Toya, take it away. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. And for Zanny, wow. To think I, I actually didn't get a half of that from looking at the painting. I'm so glad that I attended this. Thanks for Thank you. taking your time to give us all those details, but most especially, thanks for taking your time to put in all those details into, into the very tiny part, you know, mm -hmm. of, the, of the work. It's as a curator, those are the kind of things that I always, you know, look out for. And I'm so glad that you had a meaning. There was something, there was a reason why you put everything. Thank you so much for, for, for that beautiful work. Um, well, coming from the Immigrant Council for Art Innovation, I always want to know what your story is in, in Canada, because these are the things that help our work. These are the things that kind of feel the desire to, to do what we're doing. I know that I connected with you quite a while ago. I think you were not even in Canada yet when yeah. somebody right. gave you my email and you reached out, you wanted to learn. I love that spirit because I was like that also. I'm like, I need to know what the art is, where, how. And I'm glad that you reached out. Yeah. But from that time till now, what have you observed about the city when it comes to welcoming newcomers and immigrants who are artists? First, we all know that unlike other professions, there is the, there has not been a system you know to like um, bring in artists into their career which is you know what we're trying to do with the immigrant art mentorship program and a couple of other initiatives through ICAI but outside that what has been your story you know looking around in the city in your community in your neighborhood what do you think about the arts and newcomers like what do you think can be done better to further assist newcomers? And what has been your own story coming here as an artist? What has, what has that been like? I know um, you shared your story with us initially, but being here now, what is your immigrant art story? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. Um, in a mentorship program, I was referred to you and uh, as a best source for newcomer, for new immigrants. And um, I really appreciate your uh, consistency in uh, following the newcomers, artists, newcomers. And uh, I emailed you and you uh, uh, replied me uh, very quickly. And um, uh, your reaction, um, your reaction was really a kind of hope for me. And uh, I really enjoyed, and I uh, thought that uh, you are really the best person that I can reach out. And uh, now uh, it is less than one of a year that I am here and I immigrated. And I think it's a kind of accomplishment for me because as Twinkle told at, that, uh, at her session, her presentation, 
really it's difficult for a newcomer. Uh, everything is gray for a person who is in a new place. You think a uh, different culture, uh, you have a lot of uh, problems, financial problems, you don't know anybody, you don't know anywhere, and uh, you don't know how to start, but you uh, really were a hope for me because after I uh, contacted, I was in touch with you from Iran, and then I received in here, after five days, you uh, you uh, arranged a meeting time for me and all of them was uh, positive points for me and uh, really hope. And, um, and I thought um, with your uh, pursuing that uh, I am not in a mistake. I, I am not doing a mistake. I am a, uh, in a right uh, way. You know, and um, I and I know that you uh, you understand you know exactly your job because you know how far this is important. The uh, immigrants that uh, all of them have different backgrounds uh, from different countries, and they have a lot of. Uh, different uh, information, in, in, in different uh, ritual ceremony or uh, religion or uh, these differences that uh, they meet each other and then they, they share with each other can be a great point for a, um, making a culture, making the Canada a new culture. Uh, and it is really important that you are doing uh, as an example in art history, for example, Gauguin traveled in East and the turning point happened when he traveled uh, in East because uh, he found a lot of differences. And uh, after that, uh, he did a lot of things in his paintings uh, and um, his paintings got famous after his, uh, his turning point, you know? And now we are moving here and you are doing the same. You are gathering uh, a artists with each other and I really appreciate it and hopeful that uh, something new is happening. I'm so touched. Thank you. I've never even seen, seen it in that light. Thank you so much. Oh my. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Do you want to take a second to probably kind of like, I mean, a second, a minute to tell us what you think can be done better? Like, okay, maybe if, if there are other things organizations like Stride or ICAI can do, to further, because I know that I am on both sides, so I see things from the point of, view, point of view of an artist and of an art administrator, but gradually I'm getting to that point of being someone who sees things from, you know, a, a not like a holistic view, right? So we, it's always good to get those feedback so that we know if we're doing things right or no. What, what are the things you probably would have loved to see or, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I myself, I think I need a little more support because um, um, it is uh, the fact that we have a lot of problem. You know, I am not alone. I have family and I have to, for example, during these months that after my immigration, I have to study in the college because I have to get a certificate and uh, I want, I am looking for a job, but you know, for a, a, an artist cannot, I had always a dual life, life. you know, I have uh, more than 27 years uh, in uh, radiology, you know, uh, I've worked, uh, but in my country, I divide my life in two parts. One of them was about real, about the fact, about the financial issues in life. One of them was about my interest. I reduced my work hours because I, want, I wanted to care about my kids and care about my arts. 
But now, after I immigrating, you know, believe me that um, I, I don't know how to say, I am thirsty to touch my brush. I want to uh, take it in my hand and paint. But unfortunately, I couldn't find time. And I, um, I have to study, I have to get involved with uh, finding jobs and I am not, uh, I don't uh, feel uh, relaxed to be, to uh, pay attention more about uh, art. And uh, as a newcomer, you know, I expect that um, I find this situation, you know, I don't know how, but uh, for, for example, for an artist, it, can, it couldn't be, for example, I go to work and then uh, after I uh, arrived home for, uh, as soon as possible, I take my brush and paint, you know, I need to have a, a environment, a peaceful environment and a, have a kind of meditation. Uh, to reach uh, to that point that I paint. And uh, really it is difficult now for me, but I don't know how I can uh, receive to that point. <laughs> I don't know exactly. We'll get there. You will definitely get there, I can assure you. And thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you are listening to me. Oh, sure. And that would be all for me then. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. That was a beautiful back and forth. That was such a lovely exchange. Um, and, I, and I was looking over the questions the Stripes you created yesterday. And for Zanny, your beautiful answers, you answered basically each one of our questions. So I'm trying to think of a different question um, like on the spot. And I was thinking about how you mentioned you wanted to be a fashion designer. Uh, and then you have so many different uh, types of fashion like in your paintings, including like Frida Kahlo who loved fashion as well. So where did your, and Alexander McQueen, I love that reference. And I'm like, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> I should know that. Um, so I thought that was so beautiful. Where did your love for fashion come from? Uh, Cause you mentioned from your childhood too. Uh, yeah, so could you talk about that maybe? Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, you know, I think it's root. It uh, goes to my uh, childhood, as I uh, explained that I love to knitting or making some handcrafts. Uh, but uh, my role model was my mother. She was really a, a great taste in fashion, and uh, she made always uh, clothes for us. And uh, we were famous in families, in our friends. Uh, everybody knows us that uh, we uh, wore different clothes. And uh, she always uh, set us, set our clothes. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's uh, my interest goes to my background and my role models. And, uh, uh, and because of um, the main concept that I think I, I actually uh, like, uh, would like to be a conceptual fashion designer, not just the kind of, of course, I like uh, another uh, type of fashion, but because body has a, uh, has a different uh, concept and has uh, as a career, can uh, can transfer a lot of emotion, a lot of words to audiences, uh, and um, such as, for example, when we uh, use uh, oil and color and canvas, uh, clothes could be on body, and uh, can transfer a lot of things to audiences. And um, I love uh, this because I can, uh, I think also, I can uh, say a lot of things, a lot of concepts of with fashion designer. Uh, in my um, experiences about that project that I told, it was the same. 
it's, uh, for example, the monument is uh, completely a masculine uh, performance, but uh, during the time it changed, it, uh, the monument, for example, ruined, and, uh, you know, we, as a, I don't know, as a culture or as a, um, as we know, uh, is a symbol, the man is a symbol uh, as a power. Uh, when uh, he changes, uh, it changes the, after a time, maybe it could be a kind of a feminine, uh, feminine uh, situation or situ feminine body. I used uh, from this monument, from these concepts, for making some clothes, of course, I um, I um, designed these clothes, but uh, I made some of them uh, for a, an exhibition. But because of my immigration, I uh, couldn't uh, show, have a showcasing of them. Thank you so much for that answer too, because I, I noticed that the character of the mother in your paintings, she has such bright, beautiful patterns of clothing, but I also love that the children have their Batman and the Superman and the Thrasher, the skater brand clothing as well. So I love those two connections of, of fashion. Um, and you mentioned your mother and family. So I'm wondering, because uh, the characters of the children um, how do you, how do your children feel seeing seeing the paintings uh, and seeing the because it's not them but it's it's also the idea of children. So have they seen your paintings and what what do they think? Are they painters uh, themselves? Like you know, uh, I myself I don't like force the kids for doing something. You know, I think. Uh, when I force them, I give the uh, another question. I, I sorry, another answer, and uh, it is not a good way to encourage them. Uh, I do myself my jobs, my works, my paintings, and I know it uh, has a uh, it has a positive effect on them. But actually, because I spent a lot of time for painting, because really it relaxed me, it uh, make me relaxed. Uh, now they don't have positive idea about painting because <laughs> because they, uh, as my paintings you you have seen, I am such as uh, Frida for them. Uh, but uh, I know when uh, they are they getting they are getting older, and when they are getting mature, and uh, they find uh, artistic uh, path, you know. And uh, now my son is uh, interested in uh, fashion design also, and uh, she sorry he uh, lose his weight because he wants to be a model uh, and uh, now it is his aim. I don't know how far he could be successful or not. <laughs> That's such a beautiful way to see how like the generation gap becomes a little bit closer with like, yeah, he I is taking inspiration from you in a little <laughs> way. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a question. I, I also find the different gazes that all these uh, mother, father, and like the children have at one another in this painting. And I find it interesting that um, you were, you started the body of work thinking about this um, distance, the literal gap between you and the next generation. And I was wondering, did you, do you feel like you reached some kind of an understanding or new understanding while you're painting uh, your children and painting this next generation? Uh, you know, uh, it was uh, just uh, my family member or the kids, but it was uh, just that um, uh, an inspiration source. Uh, it was not, I don't want to say they are my family for example uh, they are just uh, a kind of because um, 
actually this dynamic were uh, in my family, but I don't like to say, for example, uh, I want to show them, you know, uh, or um, explain for someone that uh, she is my daughter, she, he is my son, he's my husband, it's me, you know, I don't like. Just as a inspiration source, I use them and um, and uh, because of that, my interest, because of my interest to differences between uh, individuals, uh, I use them just as a source, just that. Uh, even in my another uh, collection that uh, project, project that I had, uh, my interest in individuals, uh, I use some, um, based on uh, my interest, I use some of my relatives, my friends, uh, some people who were uh, close to me, uh, but um, I didn't like to um, paint as a realistic one. I just want to uh, paint as an inspiration source. And um, whenever I think that this person that I'm painting uh, is okay for me and I like, for example, its figure, I, fi I finished at that point. I don't want to make someone exactly the same as exists, you know? I think that's good too, because it keeps them safe too, as well. Like it's not, it's not them, it's, you know, so that I think that's beautiful. And I love that they're not real realistic, like they're more of um, like a dream or water, which makes me think of the water lilies that you were mentioning earlier mm -hmm. has very much that that quality to it. I think it's, I think it's very beautiful work. Um, so I'm just checking the time too, because it's almost it's almost six. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to I don't know, turn on your mic and ask the question or plop it in the chat. I don't know if Ariam and Eva have any other questions as well. Um, so, are, I guess one of, uh, one of my last questions too, are you gonna continue painting uh, these, uh, like these series of uh, the characters of the family portraits like are you gonna keep keep doing this uh with the families or do you think you're gonna start painting something else when you do have uh that thirst for for the paintbrush as you said yeah uh i have a lot of things in my mind you know <laughs> I, I i would like to uh, you know uh, my interest actually is uh individuals I, I don't know. Uh, of course, I know uh, where it begins, it starts. It was an event in my, uh, during my study in university, uh, when I was, uh, of course, my in uh, medical radiology again, uh, a professor brought a book uh, at the classroom. Uh, the book was about the persons, different persons with different disorders that uh, it was um, each page was about uh, one disorder and how uh, their gestures, uh, their uh, styling, sitting uh, styling, and their mimic, their looks, and it was really important to me. Uh, when I saw these pictures, it was a kind of a sparkle again in my mind, and um, I love to paint people's. Um, it is interesting uh, subject for me, uh, but uh, textures is another thing that I want to try uh, for my future uh, projects. I would like to try them. Uh, I don't know, mix together persons with mixtures or just mix and just uh, textures. I don't know exactly, but uh, I want to use them. Texture is uh, another project that I have. That sounds beautiful. And I could totally see you doing that and it being mm -hmm. successful with the patterns of the clothing again as well, bringing it to the texture. I think, yeah. I think that's gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's all the questions from me because I've asked 10 million. <laughs> I don't know how Ariam would feel uh, as well um, as Toyam. 
I am good. I enjoyed chatting with you. I just want you to know. And yeah, it's it's not the end. I mean, there are so many programs, as you probably know, we're going through a couple of restructuring at ICI just to get things going more smoothly. But then I just, I look forward to more works with you, more exhibitions and, and all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I am really uh, thankful uh, for Twin and Stride Gallery for uh, you nice guys that I am. I know you, and uh, I am proud of having uh, new friends uh, such as you. It is really interesting for me, and uh, I am proud of uh, this happening that. Yeah, I feel now I am a member of art community in Canada. Thank you for everything. That means a lot to us here. It means a lot. You're now a part of that community. That is our number one goal. Thank you for saying that. I'm going to sleep now because you made my day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining so much. And I also am so curious to see all of your clothing, like the fashion work that you're gonna do, uh, all the future painting Thank projects you. you'll do. So I'm, I'm keep my eyes peeled. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see more of your work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Farzani. This has Thank been you. such a beautiful talk to hear all of your ideas. It's just great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You are always, always, always welcome at, at Stride forever and ever and ever. So thank you so much. Uh, you are part of our community now. We're very lucky. So thank you. Thank you. And thanks everyone for coming to the talk. Uh, this talk will also be posted. Dan is a very wonderful editor. He's editing all the artist talk videos right now. So uh, we'll share that with the public as well. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Go enjoy a nice Bye. spring afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Have a great weekend. Yes. Take Me care, too. everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.